Today we will be reviewing the new Vision Line Reefer 3-pack from Lionel. This is the second of two Vision Line Reefer sets from Lionel. The first was released with the 2014 Vision Line Big Boy. This second was cataloged in the 2016 Volume 1 catalog, by, backed by popular demand. These reefers were designed to haul fruits and vegetables and perishable items back when they didn't have the mechanical refrigeration such as you know, diesel generators running compressors. They would put dry ice in here and be, and be able to move perishable products across country. In this three pack of reefers you will receive the reefers with the road numbers of 5858, that one being the sound car, 5871, 589, and 5890. These three road numbers are going to be different from the original set back in 2014 and will also be different than the road numbers on the new Santa Fe pack. This three, uh, these three reefers will operate exactly the same as the original set as long, uh, along with the Santa Fe version. It's just going to be different road numbers or a different paint scheme. Now let's take a closer look at the details on these reefers. So down here at the bottom, we have our big O-gauge die-cast coupler with hidden coupling tabs. You can fire them with a uh, magnet underneath of it or by the little side, on uh, the side coupling on the other side. Up and down, we have these nice ribs that go across the car. A nice separately applied ladder all the way up here up to the top of this car. Over here, some hand uh, grab irons and a sign that I'm not really sure what they use it used for, but we have a sign up here, along with a PFE 5890. So looking at the side of the car, down here we have our classic Lionel die-cast sprung trucks. So right here we have our springs. On the side we have very nice rivet detail molded in all across the car. Right over here we have another nice separately applied ladder a crisp Union Pacific logo, some stats on the on the reefer, and a nice crisp Southern Pacific Lines logo. So looking on this side of the car, right here in the middle we have our big double doors which we can open. If we pull this up we can open each side and close them. On the doors we have very decent hinge detail along with rivet details on it. There's another, another one of those signs, not really quite sure what they'd put there. We have a crisp uh, Pacific Fruit Express over here on the other side, and some more capacity and weight limits over here under the road number. On the far side we have some more grab irons and a stirrup, along with a stirrup on, on the underside of the doors. So looking at the top of the reefer, we have our walkway across the whole top of the reefer. And on the ends here, we have our ice hatches. And these are designed to where you can go ahead and open them and pull them up, along with this little prop to where, instead of doing that, you can prop them up as if you were going to allow the ice to evaporate. I want to take a minute just to point out that all of these little numbers and everything on the sides of the reefer are very legible. You can easily come up to it and read just about whatever you want to know about this particular reefer, along with uh, you know the capacity and the staging uh, of the bunkers and everything. On the tops, you can read the ice hatches telling you that those have to stay locked and everything on and around the reefer. So on this end of the reefer, we again see our big O-gauge coupler with our little bitty uh, coupling tab here. And then we have a little bit more elaborate details on here, a brake wheel, a little platform, and there's that ladder again, and a few rods and chains to go in with the handbrake on the car. Again, there's a, another nice crisp uh, lettering on there and some grab irons. So looking on the other side of the reefer, over here on the trucks, there's a little bit of brake detail we can see, and here's our uncoupling tab that we can pull to uncouple our coupler 
And uh, right here in the middle, we have quite a bit of brick detail. All of this is metal. It's not, there's none, no cheap plastic or anything. This is all metal, uh, all the brake lines and everything. Down over here in the middle, we have our product number and our built by Lionel in 2016. And that's now on the underside of the car, so you don't have to see that on the side of your car. So now we're looking on the underside of the sound reefer. So over here on this far truck, we can see we have our a little circuit board along with a, a little blank thing around our axle. And what that is, is that allows the reefer to give, give it a little bit of a idea how fast it's moving. Along with it'll have sensors on whether or not the truck is turned. Down over here, we have our holes for our baby bat, fat boy speaker. Again, our product number on the other side. And we still have all of our nice metal brake rigging. Down here on the bottom, we have our program run switch. And that's going to be used to program the reefer into the specific engine slot you want on your TMCC or Legacy base. Up at the top, we have our min max switch. And what that does is, allow, is minimize and, maxima, and maximize the amount of sound you're going to get. The biggest catch is going to be if you have more than one reefer. The leaving that in the max switch may overwhelm some people. And most importantly, if you go ahead and leave them in the both reefers in the same engine slot, if you turn one into minimum, you will still have your uh, unloading and loading sequences but only one of them will have the foreman speaking to all of the workers. Moving further back, again, we have another nice die-cast die truck with a center pickup roller. But on this end, we have one electrocoupler. Not really sure why only one end has an electrocoupler, but this end is the end with the electrocoupler. So this is the sound car, and on this far hatch, if we all go ahead and open this up, we will see we have a volume pod in here. This is for your absolute maximum and minimum settings of the uh, sounds. So if you're running in a conventional operation or if you just don't like changing the sound volume on the remote, this is your master, master control knob. So now we're gonna go through how to enter in the reefer into the cab two remote, seeing as they did not give you a engine module for this. These reefers are already programmed as engine 58, so we'll come in here to engine 58, hit info, and we'll add a name. We'll put in PFE reefer. It's gonna be cut to take a while. So now that I have this done, we'll go ahead and hit next. Our road number is 5858. Hit set. It'll say it's saved. Go ahead and come over here and scroll. Now we're gonna push this little down arrow until we find freight. And what that's done for us is already put in legacy and legacy rail sounds. So we can hit our info button again. And now we have all of our controls on the touchpad down here. Our volume up, volume down, flat wheel, load and unload, and our sounds on and off. Everything else is pointless. So now we're going to run through the different sounds we have on this reefer. Uh, first off, we have a low metallic sound. If we pull down this whistle, uh, they say a high metallic is aux one. You, if we pull down our train brake, and release. We get different sounds coordinating to uh, whatever we're doing with the train brake. Uh, now we're going to talk about our load and unload sequences. So uh, we can uh, push and hold those for as long as we want and they'll just keep loading or unloading or whatever they're doing at the time or we can just simply press it. Uh, there's a few different sequences so we're going to go through those now. So the load sequence, the first load sequence, is going to be putting ice into the car. So I'm going to go ahead and just press this once to make it short and sweet. First stop, the ice station, boys. Keep that ice coming. All right, let's head to the warehouse. So now that that uh, 
that sound sequence is done. Like I said, you can press and hold that and they will keep loading ice for as long as you want. But uh, just keep this short and sweet. I just pressed it once and it did that nice little short sequence. Oh, so now we're going to go through the uh, load sequence. We've moved the train and now we can press and hold to do the loading of the fruit. Okay, load the lettuce. Watch those boxes, keep them straight. Stack them up, one more layer. Keep it moving, man. Get the fruit in the car. Get the fruit in the car. We're down here. This load is finished. So as you can see, as longer you hold it down, the more frustrated the foreman gets as they're loading or unloading the car. So now the next load sequence would be a re-ice if you want to. So to re-ice, again, you'll, you're going to be moving. You move so far and you decide it now needs some more dry ice inside the hatches. So again, I'm just going to press, uh, press the load button once to keep it short and sweet. Fill up those ice bunkers, boys. Check those journals for oil. Okay, guys. Close it up. This load is finished. So they, it's kind of the same, but again, a little different. They'll uh, go through, you know, checking the journals for oil, making, you know, doing some normal maintenance on the car. So it's a little bit different. So now the next sequence is going to be unloading. So again, you're going to move your train. <laughs> We're there, ready to unload. So I'm going to press and hold this a little bit, uh, get us a little bit more sequence or talking. Okay, guys, let's move. Get those perishables unloaded. Stack those over there, buddy. That's how we do it. Fresh produce all year round. So that's the uh, official uh, load and unload sequences. You can do whatever you want. If you just load ice, it technically will allow you to unload. But that's how you can do it a little bit more prototypically. Uh, so again, if you press and hold, that'll give you a little bit longer. If you just press it once, it'll give you something nice, short and so sweet. So as mentioned earlier, this car also has an electric coupler at one end. So if we just hit our rear uh, coupler button on our t uh, TMCC or Legacy remote, we get our a coupler released. So now we're going to put these reefers into a train along with our Milwaukee Road F7s. So inside here, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to program this into train four. Go ahead and click info. We can name it. We'll do that later. But we're going to build, and we're going to go ahead and clear all of this, and go ahead and start building. Now these F9 or F7s are kind of odd when they're put into a lash up, so we have both of them set up separately instead of together. So that's just kind of different. We're going to put in our reefer, which is number 58, and we have a second one on here, which is 88. We'll go ahead and click set. We'll hear some sounds. Reefers. Now, I don't know if you heard that, I have the sounds turned down, but the horn on the engine just went off. And now our train's all put together and ready to go. Now down here on the train version, instead of going back over to engine to do all of our reefer functions, we're going to click train link, and then here we have our uh, reefer functions. See this one is our 5888, and we have our second one which is, or 5858, and our second one which is 5858, or 5888. So now we're all lashed up, ready to pull out, and we're going to go ahead and quickly add some uh, ice into our first reefer, and we're going to uh, pull this train out. So now we have our ice, and we're going to go ahead and head on out. Roger that.
So we're going to go ahead and come down this grade, and as we come down, I got, I'm got i going to put on the train brake so you can hear what the reefers do with the train brake. I got the engine sounds almost off, so you don't hear any of that. I'm going to put on the train brake now. We're going to release it real quick. And apply. First reefer car, we're going. To, I'm going to go ahead and hit the flat wheel button so you can hear that sound. We're going to stop and wrap it up. Flat wheel now. This concludes our review of the Lionel Vision Line reefer cars. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for watching. So looking at one of the ends of these cars, down here we have our die cast coupler with the hidden coupling tabs. We just have a little tab over here that'll, you know, that's how that works. <laughs>